Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Today I'm going to be showing you how to generate your own landscape photos, reference photos from Stable Diffusion. And I'm going to be showing you three different ways that you can do it. So this is going to be useful if you're an artist, you're looking for a reference photo to use, and maybe you've got a photo of your own that you like the style of and you want to generate more similar looking photographs. Maybe you just want to use a photo for your website. Maybe you just want to, who knows, whatever reason, this is for you. So three different ways. The first way that I'm going to talk about is a tool called Clip Interrogator. And I've already actually prepared an example here, but I'll show you another one. Uh, so this is the first example. I've basically uploaded this reference here, and this is one that I found off a website, Pixabay, and it's a royalty-free website. You can go to download lots and lots of reference photos. I spend a lot of time on there, probably too much time when searching for a reference photo. But when you find a good one, sometimes you just look through and you want to find some other ones that resemble it, and it's very difficult, you know, the composition, the uh, photographer, that kind of thing. There's so many different factors involved. So if you've got a photo that you like, you can actually upload it into this tool, Clip Interrogator. So this uh, is what I've done. And I've left it all on the basic settings. You know, this one here, it says best for Stable Diffusion 1. It's the only model that you can use. And I know Stable Diffusion, there's a few different models that you can choose from now. It's 2.1, uh, 2.1-768, and then this one here, the beta version, SDXL beta. And uh, Dream Studio actually used to allow access to the previous models as well. I'm not sure why they're, uh, they're not in there anymore. Every time I check back, it's slightly different in some way. So I guess they're upgrading and um, maybe getting rid of some of their older models. So anyway, go, getting back to the point. So what you do is that you submit a photograph, click submit, and it will actually extract the prompts that may get you a similar looking photograph. So I've copied and pasted that straight into Stable Diffusion. I've used the photographic style and you know the engine, the model is SDXL beta, just all standard steps. There's no really nothing that you need to alter in the settings and it's generated these three images. So I've just hit dream again and you can see here, it's creating four other images. You can do things as well, like going up to change the style. So I've actually selected photographic, but perhaps I want an anime kind of style. I can click anime and generate that. So I think that's really cool now because it you know, doesn't mean that you have to actually go in and change any of the prompts. And I think it's really cool that you can actually go through and select these little styles. I know there's only a few styles in there. And if you want something that's not on here, for example, I don't know, 18th century art style or something, you know, you're going to have to add that into the prompt somewhere. But, you know, for a quick start, something that you can do in one to two minutes, I mean, you really can't beat that. Look at that. You've got some great little photographs, even that one there. Look at that. Pretty cool. Um, let's see if I can just if I take off the style and just see what it generates go through again, I can find uh, is there anything else here, maybe fantasy art, see what it comes up with fantasy art. So it's the same prompt. And you can generate all these images. I mean, I think even this one further down here, where is it here? Oops, that one here looked pretty good. You know, that could be a nice little reference that you could use, uh, you know, as a practice session or for a little sketch or something like that. Uh, you know, nice shadows as well. I'm always just amazed at how well Stable Diffusion is able to get the light correct. So you can see these are the new ones that have just generated. You can see that one. What did I use there? I used uh, no prompt, uh, no style, sorry. So it's come up with a whole bunch of images here and they're kind of more photographic in nature. And this one here is like fantasy, I think, or fantasy style so you've got a bit of this stuff here the even the boats look a little bit different you know um, this one here a little more stylized i mean not all too different really from the previous ones um, but another thing you can do you can also change some of the prompts i mean you could put uh, night landscape okay in there maybe we want to just get a more darker scene moon moonlight or something put that in there uh, moon comma and let's just see what it comes up with so even with the you know the prompts that it comes out with the output there it's great that you can just go ahead and you know just tweak it again 
to turn it into yeah turn it to something that you kind of like and this one's a little bit odd it's actually generated a, a painting on a wall but here you can see there you go got a bit of moon moon sort of setting eerie kind of setting it's still on fantasy art so if i were to switch this on to just i don't know enhance or even to photographic let's have a look at what it does it does take a little bit of time to to generate but it's good that with the new dream studio it actually just uh yeah you can generate multiple images and just wait look at previous ones while they're still generating so look at that you've got nice sort of moonlight setting the moonlight reflected in the water you know that one's not too good but i like that one here this one's really nice uh, this one's really nice as well i like that there's a bit of this shoreline here could be a beach or something this one's on the side you know a couple of moons here even even this one i thought looks look pretty nice uh you know what's this one here so i've used fantasy art okay as well and just with that night landscape night landscape but i haven't specified anything about moon uh, moon sort of settings so as you can see i think this is a really good way to generate quickly if you've got any sort of image pre-existing image so we can try another one another royalty free reference photo very nice photo we can hit submit it does take a little bit of time for it to eventually process it okay so i've actually just gone ahead and copy pasted the prompt that it's come up with all these prompts anyway i did have to take out this prompt jd images for some reason uh, sometimes it does not let you through because there's certain prompts in here that get flagged or whatever so i figured that was probably the one i took that out and you can see it's generated a few of these really cool old car photographs you know the thing is that they're not really they're not really sort of uh, broken down and destroyed like that one there so if i just go and maybe select photographic let's see what it would do so i might go in and just change just like an old car and old uh, rusty car something rusty car parked in front of an abandoned house let's see if that helps if you've got the prompt closer to the front as well it's more likely to be picked up because yeah these are these look like perfectly functional sort of cars okay and another cool thing you can do as well is that you can change the settings uh, down below here to make it more landscape orientation it does cost you some more credits though this one's 3.3 credits for just a normal uh yeah more sort of square image so if i go for maybe four by three it's you know a bit more of a landscape orientation still not getting much of that rust and that broken down sort of car look to it old rusty car broken broken car parked in front of an abandoned house let's try that uh, oh, there you go these ones are starting to look a little bit more a little bit more worn down uh, a little bit maybe like these two but they're not as obvious as that one so yeah look, you're gonna have to go around change things around as well just try to find some extra prompts that might give you results similar to this but i think just off the bat uh you know just off the bat it looks pretty decent and you've even got these little farmhouses and things in the background as well that you can potentially use so let's try one more all right so it's finished now and you can see the output and it doesn't look quite right herd of giraffe standing on top of a large field blah 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 let me just copy this over we're probably gonna have to change this around this giraffe thing in there i'm just gonna put it in there for the for fun let's see what happens and you know you notice as well that you can get a little bit more of the car and a bit more of the actual landscapey feel if you change the orientation you know if i put it here this is like 10 credits seven by four let's see what that kind of generates oops let me just get rid of that i'm going to get rid of this herd of giraffe i'll put a a field a field field with trees 
oh, lush hang on let me just get rid of this a lush green field with trees and there's giraffes what's it doing so yeah it's not always so accurate in terms of picking up I'm not sure why it's come up with that giraffe thing but let's just click dream again and i've just changed that first one on a lush green field with trees gpt cottage hippie naturalist <laughs> uh you know some of these i don't even i don't even know where where these come from but i do find a lot of the time when you put an image in there even when i put different art in there different different artists or even myself it generates art that kind of looks a bit like it. it's really odd uh so i mean let's just see let's see what it, what it comes up with okay there we go we've got something you know uh, it doesn't look exactly like that other reference but you know you've got something like a like a field or i mean compared to that one there actually it probably looks a little more neat and refined um, and as you can see, like you get more of this landscapey type feel uh, if you change. It actually changes the the way that the image generates as well. Like you can see here, there's not really too much detail in the grass, and there's more kind of a closer up. You know, the the background's not in focus. More the car is in focus, whereas you know with these ones, you can see a bit more of the background because we've changed the the um, the actual orientation of the image to seven by four or something rectangular okay so look that's one method and i'm going to show you now another method and this is basically uh, a way to generate prompts it's like a prompt generator so i'm going to show you the second method now and this is using a prompt builder or a prompt generator so for this one here it starts off more bare bones so you're not actually uploading an image of sorts you're just selecting prompts that are going to lead to potential image that you would like. So Dream Studio, uh, there's this website called promptomania.com. I'll link that also in the description. This is another one that I found. It's just called uh, the AI art uh, dashes in between. I'll put that in the description as well. But they both work kind of a similar uh, method. So you basically just go through for this one here, Promptomania, for example, I'm just going to click landscape base image. So if I, you know, art medium, Let's see what I want in here. I don't think I want any of that. Um, maybe I can just go camera, scenes. Um, you know, we can go, ooh, what can we do? We can go wild, uh, landscape, photojournalism. Uh, so we've got a few prompts in there already. And what else can we do? We can go color. We can, you know, just for, for fun we can click low contrast just trying to pick a few and you've you really got to experiment with this a bit as well post processing shaders mimic the style of an artist so you can even put another another artist or even a photographer's name in there as well okay i don't think there's anything let me just see what else we, we can potentially put in there lighting so we can go with so much global illumination uh, global illumination that looks nice and it actually gives you even a, a little example of what it looks like which is pretty cool film type um, DSLR you know you can chuck in a few of these prompts like 35 millimeter uh, what else mm, Nikon D70 okay so we'll draw from some some previous images okay and um, so we, we've got a few of these in here so we can copy some of these over all right and that gives you a little bit of an understanding that kind of more descriptors for your landscape and what i want to put in the front is something like you know the type of landscape so if i want to say country landscape okay and just generate this one i'll leave it on that seven by four but normally i will have it on five by four four by three or just one by one by one and especially if you're just testing things out i'd recommend putting it in one by one because you just use less credits until you can find a prompt that works for you then you don't have to you know spend three times the amount of credits just to work something out um i'm just going to click that one again so you've got a one by one version and also the seven by four version over here 
Okay, so that's one way and, you know, spend some time going through it. And, you know, these are really good because sometimes you, you're just struggling to find the particular descriptors or the particular prompts that relate to the scene that you want to see. And, and I like that you can actually visually, you know, gauge based on these examples here what each prompt will do, may or may not do. Okay, so it, uh, it's actually quite handy. So there's quite a few more here, telephoto, all this kind of stuff like that as well. It goes into a lot of detail. Uh, this one here, this other website, you know, this allows you to actually go through and select even more details. You know, it's kind of similar as the, uh, like the other one, but I can go to like effects, um, you know, for example, grain effect, you know, you can copy that. And it, this in this particular one, you can't really put them side by side uh, like the other one here, like copy them all over at once, but you can, yeah, just, it gives you ideas so that when you go through, you you know, if you're thinking, oh, I want a particular type of lighting, I don't know, maybe I want it to have a bit of backlighting or, you know, a bit of a spotlight effect or something like that. This just gives you ideas. So you're not sitting there spinning your, um, spinning your wheels, trying to figure out what to put in the prompt. Uh, so look at that. There's a couple in there and you can see with the landscape ones like these two particularly I like this one and Look at that. Look at how it does that light. Absolutely Amazing this kind of almost implies that there's a tree to the left or something that Or it could be a cloud shape or something on the ground cloud shadow uh, but there's nice elements of uh, Light and dark in there. This one's interesting as well Okay and the photography prompt really helped as well as this photography style. This one wasn't really on the ball there. Probably if you look at these other two, that one looks pretty good. Okay. And you can even just extend that out and just create it into a larger image as well if you'd like. Okay, there's some for some reason there's no fence here. But you know, just from selecting a few little things and writing in the prompt what type of landscape you'd want to generate, you can quite easily create these images okay so have a little play around uh, let's try another one just while I'm here uh, can we so I'm going to try a second one and go back to landscape again let's go to camera and I will go to scenes let's put something interesting golden hour I like that golden hour we're going to put down editorial uh, photography uh, let's leave that film types so you can actually select a whole bunch of stuff here like in this particular style DSLR is there like a shot on 70 millimeter let's try that lenses and perspective um, you know, look at that side view so you can even can even change the the type of view that you get type of shot angle of the shot blur and distortion no, i don't think i really want any of that stuff okay let's have a look what else do we have in here color we can change some colors around you know if i want to create some let's see if i can get some uh, sepia desaturated kind of images geometry shapes no i don't really like that sometimes when you put too much in there as well it does confuse it so you have to be specific but the prompts have to also also make sense in its entirety when they're all combined together they have to kind of relate to each other shaders events compound details i don't even know what that means compound details delicate and intricate that's pretty cool Let's try that one. So we've got a few things we can put in there. Just copy that over and go back into Dream Studio, paste. And let's think, what could we do? We could go night landscape. Um, go all right, detailed night landscape. Detailed night landscape of uh, forest of Let's see what it does. Just change it, see if we can generate some more landscape looking images and that orientation anyway. 
Okay, we'll see what that comes up with in just a moment. There we go, so we've got some coming back and these look pretty nice. Let's see if we can change it to something else, another style, maybe just enhance. It hasn't quite got the night. I mean, it looks almost like a dusk. You know, the sun's low in the sky, starting to set maybe. So again, yeah, you, you're gonna need to change things around, re-emphasize some of the prompts. Maybe, especially I think because it's got this thing here, this golden hour prompt. So if I remove that, it's probably going to come up with a a better shot as it's getting confused between the two different prompts, night landscape and golden hour. So it's looks like it's kind of prioritized golden hour. Okay, let's just see what that comes up with. Back to the one by one again. This one's a little bit better. It's got the sepia, it's kind of prioritized the sepia, the saturated colors, this one as well. These ones, not really. Okay, let's have a look at these top ones. Okay, so yeah, detailed night landscape of forest. And yeah, you've got some reference photos. These are probably not the best, but again, you've got to play around with the settings, things like even taking out the desaturated, some of these other stuff as well. Um, you can play around and potentially get some better images out of them. So that's the second way using these prompt builders. Now, the third way is a pretty simple way, kind of similar to the first way, probably easier than the first way. And uh, I use a couple of websites here, and this one's lexico.art. I'll link it in the description as well as this other one here, prompthero.com. Both these will be in the description. And what you basically do is go through and type out something that, a type of landscape that you like. So uh, for example, I've just put landscape photo in here and I can go through and just scroll and find one that I like. Uh, can I just put photograph instead? For, for landscape photography, detailed landscape photography. Let's try this. Maybe it comes up with some more realistic looking ones. You know, this one I've actually gone and specified stable diffusion, just put landscape photography. I don't know if that's going to make much of a difference. Uh, oh, so this one I like, that's pretty cool. It's a nice one. It looks almost computer generated though. Is there something that's just not too CGI like? And, you know, it depends as well because this website also has a kind of proprietary, proprietary model that they use. Um, but that's it. That's example one. So I mean, if I like these, this sort of cliff, cliff type of scene, you can copy the prompt just like that. Go back into Dream Studio, chuck that in here, generate, and let's see what it does. It's actually listed them one by one. I wonder if it's gonna, wonder if it's gonna pick that up. That's weird. I should just copy it like. Yeah, doesn't matter. Um, so if we go over to this other website here, you know, there's actually some really nice prompts and there's, uh, you can separate them out for different models. So I'm just going to click stable diffusion because that's what we're using. And yeah, have a little bit of a browse and see if there's something that catches your eye here, a, particular, a type of landscape that you might want to paint. Okay. And let's just, um, let's just go for this one. Let's have a look at that one. Um, Click on it, hang on. Okay, and there we go. We can just copy this prompt. And that looks pretty realistic, actually. Can we go back to Dream Studio? And there you go. That was the last prompt that we put in there. And that's worked really, really nicely. It looks like the way that it's separated out the prompts by uh, one prompt per line has worked quite well, too. So, I mean, in less than a minute, really, I've just gone through and found this, copied that prompt, stick it in there, and you've got a whole bunch of beautiful references that you can use. Let's go back to maybe four by three, dream another four by three one up again, see if it changes anything. And again, this is the most recent prompt that I had to play around with here on Prompt Hero. And again, I'm not affiliated or anything with any of these companies. They're just websites that I use. There's so many of them in terms of these prompt builders and these other, yeah, these, these 
these these uh, ones here that you can just search a pro search a particular subject and it comes up with the prompts. And they often have their own, yeah, they, they use the Stable Diffusion API as well, uh, just inbuilt, and then they uh, add their own proprietary modifications and things like that to it. But I, yeah, just basically just use it to get some prompts quickly. And there you go. Here's another one. There, let's say uh, two of them really. There's that one from before with the cliffs. And I think that looks quite nice, these two. A little bit cartoony. Yeah, a little bit cartoony. What does it have anything in here that, yeah, art station? That might be, you know, octane render. Maybe get rid of this. And again, like it comes down to the style, right? So if you want something a bit more photographic, you might have to get rid of some of those prompts that suggest like it's computer generated or suggest that it is hand drawn or art or something like that. Because these do look a little bit more artsy, like digital art. Um, this one here also has like a prompt art station, I think, where is it? Mm, Octane Render Art Station. So if you eliminate some of this stuff, you're probably going to get, yeah, you're probably going to get some better prompt. Um, yeah, there you go. Look at that. That's much, much more like what I wanted. So really quite a great tool. And if you're stuck trying to find the reference photo that you like, why not create your own? and use these instead very easy takes less than a minute as you can see so if you have any questions let me know down in the comments below this is a really basic guide and if you have anything that you'd like to share as well any suggestions tips feedback you know if you've been using you prop there's probably been people out there that have been using dream studio been using stable diffusion a lot more than i have please share down below uh, some of your tips as well finally if you enjoyed this video do me a favor and click the like button it just helps me to get the video out to more people and if you want to see some more of these tutorials make sure you subscribe